Hi everybody, my name is Esther. I'm so excited to teach you the present simple tense in today's video. Now this lesson can be a little difficult, so I'll do my best to keep it easy and fun for you. My goal is for you to understand how and when to use this grammar by the end of the video. Let's get started. Let's start with the first usage for the present simple tense. The first usage is pretty easy. We use it to talk about facts, truths, and generalizations. Let's look at some examples. The sun is bright. Now that's a fact. It doesn't change. Everybody knows that the sun is bright. It was bright yesterday, it's bright today, and it will be bright tomorrow. That makes it a fact. Pigs don't fly. That's also a fact. Everybody knows that pigs don't fly. Cats are better than dogs. Now this you may not agree with. This is my truth. I'm making a generalization about cats and dogs in this example. And finally, it's cold in winter. This really depends on where you live, but for a lot of people, or let's say for most people, it is cold in the winter. So that's the truth for some people. Now, let's look back and see what verb I used in the present simple tense. For the first sentence, we have is. I use the be verb is to talk about the sun. In the next sentence, I use the negative of do, do not. And you'll notice I use the contraction and put these two words together to make it don't. Cats are better than dogs. I use the be verb are to talk about cats because cats is plural. And finally, it's cold in winter. Here, I use the be verb is again, but I used a contraction to combine it and is and made its. Let's move on to the next usage. We also use the present simple tense to talk about habits and routines. So things and actions that happen regularly. Let's look at the examples. I always eat lunch at noon. You'll notice I use the adverb always because I'm talking about something that I do regularly. What is that? Eat lunch at noon. So I use the present simple tense. And here I use the verb eat. I eat. The second example says you play games every day. Do you see the clue that helps you know that this is something that happens regularly? It's every day. So it's something that happens as a routine or a habit. So you play games. The verb here is play. You play. The next example says Seth starts work at 9 a.m. daily. Again, this is something that happens regularly. Seth goes to work at 9 a.m. every day. Now you'll notice I put a blue line under the S in starts. Can you figure out why? Well, remember that when the subject of a sentence is he, she, or it, we need to add an S or ES to the end of the verb in the present simple tense. Seth is a he, so we need to add an S. Seth starts work at 9 a.m. daily. And the last example, they study English every Monday. Again, every Monday means that they do it regularly. And that's why we use the present simple tense, they study. So as a review, remember, we use the present simple tense to talk about habits and routines that happen regularly. Let's move on. We also use the present simple tense with non-continuous verbs. These are verbs that we don't use in the continuous form, even if they're happening right now. They're also called stated verbs. These are connected with thoughts, opinions, feelings, emotions, and our five senses. Let's look at the examples. I love my mom. The verb here is love. That's an emotion. So I use the present simple tense. It smells good. Smell is one of the five senses. So I use the present simple tense. You'll notice I underlined the S because remember, the subject is it. Kelly feels happy. This is talking about a feeling. Again, the subject here is Kelly, which is a she. 
so I added an s to the verb. And finally, they need help. We don't say they are needing help, even though it's happening right now. Need is non-continuous, so we say they need help. So remember, you also use the present simple tense with non-continuous verbs connected with thoughts, opinions, feelings, emotions, and our five senses. Let's move on. Speakers occasionally use the present simple tense to talk about something that will happen in the near future. Now this can be a little confusing, but we're not using the future tense. We're using the present simple tense. It's possible to do that, and it's actually common for people to do that. Again, for something that will happen in the near future. Let's look at the examples. I have class at 6 p.m. 6 p.m., that's pretty soon. So I can say, I have class, the present simple tense. Lisa arrives on Sunday. Again, the near future, Sunday. So I use the present simple tense. I added an S at the end of arrive because Lisa, the subject, is a she. We start work soon. Again, the near future, soon. So I use the present simple verb, start. And finally, my students come tomorrow. This is something that will happen in the near future, so I use the verb come. So remember, it is possible and it is common to use the present simple tense to talk about something that will happen in the near future. Let's go to the next usage. Let's talk about a possible negative usage for the present simple tense, and that is do not and does not. The first example says Mike eats bread. I put an S at the end of eat because the subject is Mike, which is a he. Now that's not a negative statement. What happens when I want to turn it into a negative statement? Well, I change it like this. Mike doesn't eat bread. So you'll notice that I didn't move the S here, okay? Instead, I added doesn't. I took does and not and I turned it into a contraction by combining the two and making it doesn't. So if the subject is he, she, or it, we use does not or doesn't to make it negative. You swim well. In this case, I don't need to put an S at the end of swim because the subject is you. If I want to make this sentence negative, I use don't. You don't swim well. I use the contraction for do and not. I combine them to make don't. So if the subject is I, you, we, or they, we use do not or don't. So to review, do not and does not or don't and doesn't is a possible usage for the negative for present simple tense. Let's continue on. Now I'll talk about one possible question form for the present simple tense, and that is by using do or does. So let's look at the example. They live here. That's not a question, right? They live here. In order to turn it into a question, it's really simple. All I have to do is add do to the beginning and add a question mark at the end. Do they live here? So if the subject is I, you, we, or they, simply add do to the beginning of the question. How about this one? He plays soccer. In this statement, the subject is he, and that's why you should know by now I have an S at the end of play. However, to turn this into a question, I add does at the beginning. Does he play soccer? What you'll notice here is that I no longer have the S at the end of play. Instead, I just use does at the beginning. So for he, she, or it, put does at the beginning. And don't worry about putting an S or ES at the end of the verb. So to review, one possible way of forming a question for the present simple tense is using do or does at the beginning. All right, let's move on. Let's start with the first checkup. In this checkup, I want you to focus on the be verbs. Remember, be verbs in the present simple tense can be is, am, or are. 
Take a look at the first sentence. It says she blank at school. The subject of this sentence is she. What be verb do we use for she? The correct answer is is. Now, if you were thinking of the negative, the correct answer would be she isn't or she is not. That's correct as well. And if we want to use a contraction for she is, we can say she's at school. For the next one, it says they blank 20 years old. The subject of this sentence is they. What be verb do we use for they? The correct answer is are. For the negative, you can also use aren't or are not. Also, if you want to use the contraction for they are, you can say they're 20 years old. The next sentence says his father blank busy. The subject of this sentence is his father. What subject pronoun do we use for his father? The correct answer is he. Remember, for he, she, it, the be verb is is. For the negative, we can say isn't or is not. And for a contraction for father and is, we can say his father's busy. Now, I want you to try to find the mistakes in this sentence. We isn't good friends. Did you find the mistake? This is the mistake. The subject is we and the be verb is are. Therefore, the correct answer is we are not or the contraction we aren't good friends. The next sentence, can you find the mistake? Are John a teacher? Think about the subject of this sentence. The subject is John. And John, the subject pronoun, is he. Therefore, we don't use are, we use is. Is John a teacher? Is John a teacher? And finally, it am a puppy. Hmm. This one is a big mistake. The subject here is it. What be verb do we use for it? The correct answer is is. So we don't say it am a puppy. We say it is a puppy. Great job, guys. Let's move on to the next checkup. For the next checkup, I want you to think of some other verbs in the present simple tense. Take a look at the first sentence. He blank. I want you to think of the verb like, his dinner. What do we do to the verb when the subject is he, she, or it? Remember, we add an S. He likes his dinner. For the negative, you can also say he doesn't like his dinner. The next sentence says, my students blank. I want you to think of need books. What is the subject pronoun for my students? The correct answer is they. If the subject is I, you, we, or they in the present simple tense, we don't change the verb. We keep it as is. So the correct answer is my students need books. Now for the negative, you can say my students don't need books. The next sentence says, I blank, think of the verb live in London. What do we do here? Again, the subject is I. Therefore, we don't change the verb. The correct answer is, I live in London. What's the negative? I don't live in London. For the next part, I would like for you to try to find the mistake in the sentence. He doesn't likes math. What's the error here? Well, this is a negative. He doesn't, that's correct. However, we do not add an S when we have doesn't in front of it. 
Do he eat candy? Here we have a question. The subject of this sentence is he. For he, she, it, when we're making a sentence in the present simple tense, we use does, not do. So the correct answer is does he eat candy? And finally, Sam is play computer games. There are two present simple verbs here, and we can't have that. So the correct way to fix this sentence is to get rid of the is. So take that out and say, Sam plays computer games. Add an S because the subject is Sam, which is a he. Great job. Let's move on to the next practice. For this next practice, we're taking a look at routines. Remember, the present simple tense can be used to describe events that happen regularly. Let's take a look at the first sentence. We blank the bus every day. And I want you to use the verb take. Here, we see the clue word every day, which shows that this is a routine. The subject of this sentence is we. In the present simple tense, remember, if the subject is I, you, we, or they, we do not change the verb. Therefore, the correct answer is we take the bus every day. In the second sentence, it says he blank to school every morning. Again, a routine. The subject here is he. What do we do if the subject is he, she, or it? We add s or es to the verb. In this example, the verb is go. So we have to add es. He goes to school every morning. In the next sentence, it says Lizzie not play, in parentheses, tennis. Here, I want you to think about the negative form. Lizzie is a she. The subject pronoun is she. So what do we do for the negative? We say does not or the contraction doesn't play tennis. We do not add an s or es to the end of the verb. Instead, we say doesn't or does not. Now, I want you to find the mistake in the next sentence. They watches TV at night. Can you figure out what's wrong with this sentence? The subject is they. Therefore, remember, we do not change the verb. We say watch. They watch TV at night. In the next sentence or question, it says, does he plays soccer every week? The subject of this sentence is he. To make a sentence, putting does at the beginning is okay. However, we don't put an S at the end of play. Therefore, the correct answer is to simply say, does he play soccer every week? And finally, he always forget his book. In this case, the subject is he. Remember again, for he, she, it, we add s or es to the end of the verb. What's the verb in the sentence? It's forget. Therefore, we have to say, he always forgets his book. Great job. Let's move on to the next practice. In this checkup, we'll take a look at how the present simple tense can be used to describe future events. Take a look at the first sentence. It says the airplane blank tonight. And we're looking at the verb leave. What is the subject of this sentence? The correct answer is airplane. What subject pronoun do we use for airplane? It's it. Remember, in the present simple tense for he, she, it, we add an s or es to the verb. The verb here is leave, so we simply add an s. The correct answer is the airplane leaves tonight. In the second sentence, it says, does the movie blank soon? 
and we're using the verb start. What is the subject of this sentence? It's movie. And what subject pronoun do we use for movie? It's it. So it's like saying, does it blank soon? Well, this is a question. So we already have the correct word in the front, does. For he, she, it, when we're asking a question, we use does. Now, all we have to do is use the same verb in its base form. So, does the movie start soon? We do not add an S or ES here. Finally, it says Vicky blank tomorrow. The subject of this sentence is Vicky. Vicky is a girl, so the subject pronoun is she. You'll remember now that for in this case, we put works. W-O-R-K-S, works. Vicky works tomorrow. Now, let's find the mistakes in the sentence below. He do leave at 3.30 p.m. Actually, there's only one mistake. Can you find it? He do leave at 3.30 p.m. We do not need the do here. We only use do in a question or in the negative form. But also, the subject is he, so we would use does. Either way, we don't need this here. Well, now we have the verb leave with the subject he. Do you know what to do? We simply change this to leaves, just like we did in the first sentence. He leaves at 3.30 p.m. In the next sentence, they don't start school today. We have a negative sentence, they don't. That's correct. Do not is correct for subject pronoun they. However, in the negative form, we don't have to change the main verb at all. Therefore, all we will do is say they don't start school today, no S. Finally, does we eat at noon? Take a look, what is the subject or subject pronoun in this sentence? The correct answer is we. Think about the question form. Do we say do or does in the question form for the subject pronoun we? The correct answer is do. We say do. So the correct way to say this sentence or question is do we eat at noon? Great job, guys. You're done with the practice. Thank you for your hard work. Let's move on. Good job, guys. You put in a lot of practice today. The present simple tense is not easy, and I'm really happy to see how hard you guys worked on mastering it. Be sure to check out my other videos, and thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.